One of the ways Softer really shines is its ability to allow you to set visibility and editing permission so that certain information, pages, and blocks within your app can only be accessed by predefined user groups. In this video, we're gonna review page and block visibility settings so you can make certain pages and block available to users that are logged in or logged out. This is helpful if you're gating information behind a client portal or a CRM, for example, or even a membership. We're also going to take it one step further and learn how to set up user groups. User groups allow you to give different editing and visibility permissions to predefined groups of users, such as managers, employees, or contractors. Maybe you're creating a customer onboarding application and you want only your customers to be able to see their onboarding information. And you want managers to be able to see a list of all customers and where they are in their onboarding journey. You would then be able to create a user group for both the customer and the manager with these custom conditions. So in the case for my app in this series, I'm creating an employee portal where employees can sign up, create their own profile, and view other employees within the company via a directory. In this app, they can also ask for time off. So I also want managers to be able to see and access all of that information in addition to the request time off for their department. So I need to first start thinking about what level of visibility and permissions I want my user groups to have. So before I dive into creating a softer app, I typically like to write this down. It can be helpful to start thinking about at a base level what logged users can see, what logged out users can see, and what all users can see. In addition, you want to start thinking about what types of users you will have beyond just logged in and logged out. So managers, employees, and contractors. And then what you want those specific users to be able to do and not be able to do. So I always recommend trying to map that out first. And we've provided a handy outline to get you started in this exercise. It's available in the comment section below this video. Once you have that built out, let's dive into setting our visibility and user groups. All right, let's start with page and block level visibility settings. So for my use case in this series, I want logged in users to be able to see the employee directory, their profile page, and the update password page. And then for non-logged in users, they can see maybe the login page here and we'll have some additional information about the company here. So let's start with the profile page. I head over to pages and user profile. If you remember from the previous video, the user profile block allows users to edit their profile information and their password. So if I'm an employee that wants to update my hometown, for example, I can do that within the profile block and it will automatically update in my users table as well as within Softer itself. Now, this is obviously sensitive information that I don't want the public to see or have access to. So let's set our first level of visibility for this page. Now, Softer gives you block level and page level visibility settings. Since this is an entire page we don't want the public to see, let's go for changing the page level visibility. We do this by heading over to pages, locating our user profile page, hitting the three dots and heading to settings. Then we'll scroll down and it says, define which user groups can view this page, all users logged in or non-logged in. So at a base level, we want logged in users to be able to access this page. Now we'll get into custom user groups in a minute, but just know this is how you set page level visibility at a basic level. So besides visibility per page, you can also set this at the block level. So for example, let's say like on the homepage of my employee portal, I wanna have a sign in block that's only visible if a user hasn't signed in yet. We can easily do this in software by just setting the visibility on the block itself. So here we are back on the home page, and let's say like I want to add the sign in block that's only visible if a user hasn't logged in yet. So let me add the block first. So we're going to go to dynamic, user accounts, and we'll do sign in form. Perfect. So all we simply need to do is click into the block itself, head over to the visibility tab, and you can see here the same settings that we just saw for the page level visibility is also available at the block level. So we want this to only be available to non-logged in users. Now you'll notice there's a little icon in the upper left hand corner of this block. 
If you hover over it, this just quickly shows you what visibility you've set for this block. Now, let's take a quick look at what it looks like if I'm a logged in user. Yep, perfect. That block then disappears. And then if I'm a non-logged in user, great, there's the block. Now, another key area where visibility comes into play is with the header of your app. If you're building an app with login capabilities, you typically want to have at least two headers. One header for when users are logged out and they need to sign in or sign up to the app. The other for when a user is signed in. As you can see, Softer's already created two headers for us when we set up our application. And if you navigate to the icon in the upper left hand corner, you'll notice the visibility settings for each one, logged in versus not logged in. You can probably guess what needs to be included on the non-logged in user header, which is a way for users to sign in and sign up, which software has already added those for us when we onboarded and created our app. Now for the logged in header, you wanna think about what do you want your users to have access to when they're logged in? That's what you'll add to the navigation. So if I click onto this header, you'll see over here, we have the different styles. So I can upload a logo if I want to. I can also add image alt text to the logo. You can additionally add or edit navigation links here. You'll notice a user profile icon under the logged in header. The user profile allows your users to access their profile information as well as reset their password. And you can also add a sign out feature. This is pretty handy if you're gonna have different user groups that require a profile. So I usually like to keep it toggled on. And then you'll see underneath show user profile, you can add additional links such as my profile. Make sure you link it to the user profile page like we went over in the previous video. And then you can also add the option for sign out, which software automatically creates that action for you. And you can add additional links here. So for my app, I want to add access to the employee directory in the header. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now by scrolling back up to links and then just adding a new link. So I'll add employee directory. Then you'll go add action, open page. And which page do we want to open? Let's select it. If we can remember our list block, we named it employee. So that's the one that I want to showcase. Cool. Now let me publish it and just take a look at what this looks like. Great. In addition, I have my profile block here. I can head to my profile. Perfect. Okay. Go ahead and start thinking about the different headers that you'll need for your app and what information you want to make available in your header, whether your user is logged in or logged out, for example. Now we've covered the basics of block and page level visibility. Let's take it one step further and learn about setting custom user groups. Now remember, for my app, I want employees to be able to edit and update their own profile as well as view all employees within the company via a directory. Now for managers, I want them to be able to update any of the employees' profile. Now this is done in two steps. First is creating the user and then next is setting the permissions based off of that user group. Let's dive in. So let's first create the user groups by heading to the users tab, user groups, and add new user group. So remember, in my use case, the first user group is going to be a manager. So let me go ahead and name it manager. Then we have to set the conditions that allow someone to be considered a manager. So if we remember on our Airtable database, employees are assigned a seniority, which is shown in the seniority field here. So what we want to do is say, if a logged in user is assigned the seniority of manager, then they get assigned to the manager user group. So you can start to think about how this can work for your own use case, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's go with seniority manager. So back to conditions. I'm going to add condition. This is visible if the attribute is logged in users, seniority is, and then manager. Make sure you're copying and pasting it directly and remember it's case sensitive. Perfect. Now let's say like we also want to add additional conditions meaning I want VPs to also be assigned the manager user group. 
So all we have to do is just add additional conditions to that user group. So let me first show you another way you can actually access user groups is by going to settings, user groups and permissions, user groups. Now we can see our manager user group here. So if I click into it and scroll down, I'm going to add a condition or visible if logged in users, you guessed it, seniority. Separately, we could also just say the logged in user seniority is not employee. It really depends on how you want to set up your app and your conditions. But for now, let's just create this user group. Now we can see it here. So let me create a second one for employees. So employees, add condition, logged in users, seniority is employee. Now, everyone is an employee, obviously, of this company, but this is just to discern between people that have the capability to see and edit all employee information or people that are just allowed to edit and update their own information. So let's go ahead and create that user group. Congratulations, you have now successfully set up your user groups as well as setting page and block level visibility within your software app. Now, you may notice that I'm in a different location from the beginning of this video, and we kind of cut this video short. That's because as of March 2023, we've now rolled out a powerful new feature that's changed the game when it comes to utilizing your user groups to set up editing permissions within your software app. We call this functionality action buttons. With the new action buttons, you can now perform CRUD operations with your underlying data. What that essentially means is you can assign your user groups the ability to update records or add new records directly within Softer, all without them ever having to touch the database itself. So let's dive into that video next. It might not flow exactly with the Getting Started with Softer series because we've recorded it many months afterwards. However, the instruction and demonstration gets the message across. You'll be up to speed in no time. See you in the next video.